Hello, welcome to Crack a Loaf. Thank you for being here. Today, I want to have a conversation with you about board games, about game groups, about learning and teaching and playing games and being a good member of that environment or that ecosystem. And it's coming from a personal space. You see, I just recently realized exactly how uncomfortably obnoxious I had an M and can be to my game group. And I've made cognitive and purposeful steps to change that about myself and about the way that I interact with my community. And so I thought I'd share and have a conversation with you. You see, game groups are a fine balance, an ecosystem. And for the longest time, I've always been the host of my own, meaning I invite people over, I provide the game, I teach the game, and or we learn it together, sit down, work our way through the rule book. It's a more rare occasion that I am sitting and listening and being taught a game. But as this channel has grown over the last year or so, that's become the case more and more. There's more games that I have to learn. There's more things I want to play and more people that want to introduce me to their favorite hobby environment. And with my closest friends, the group that I care the most about, I've been remarkably obnoxious and honestly a terrible person to play games with. And I'm not saying that jokingly. I, I really have been. If any of them are watching this, I sincerely apologize and am working to correct this element about how I interact with a group when learning a game. And I'm having this conversation with the audience both as a way to just share what I've came across and what I've discovered, but as a way to encourage and make you think about the way that you're interacting with the people around you. I grew up in the RPG world, right? And there you have the idea that this is a collaborative experience. As the DM of a group, you're trying to conduct a symphony, trying to get everyone to work together, to collaborate on a story that you're telling. And yes, some people will spin things out of proportion or go the wrong direction or reject the groups or the party's advice. But for the most part, with the exception of rare occasions, the team has to work in cohesion. They can be creative. They can change or manipulate or twist the words and the story and the scenario you've given them. But they have to be creative with how they tell the story. They can't fight against you in the act of the storytelling. It's a collaborative process. And in the same way, board games, and specifically the moment you sit down to learn a game, is that. I was having a conversation with Alex from Board Game Co. And this conversation is the one that has just struck a chord with me and made me so uncomfortably aware of how ridiculous I had been. You see, in this conversation, we were talking about the nature of teaching and being taught, of learning a game and prepping for people to sit down around the table. And I was genuinely annoyed and frustrated with people who weren't paying as much attention as I wanted them to, because I'd prepared, right? I wanted to teach a game. And it irked me that people weren't engaged and were having to re-ask questions or were checking their phone or just kind of gazing off into the distance. And then it became so obvious in an uncomfortable way how I reciprocate that same behavior worse than almost anyone else I've came across when I sit down to learn a game. And this isn't with everyone. If I'm in a brand new environment or a place where I need to be as respectful as possible, I am that. But around the people I care the most about, I'm flippant and confident and want them to go quick and will joke and make fun of the teach and interrupt from time to time. And even in the past, I used to do this thing where I was just telling them to go faster because I'm overconfident in the idea that I can learn a game, that I can follow, that I like and I enjoy playing and learning while we play, that the first session is always sort of a teaching game. And over, I don't know, the past six months or so, I'd become determined that the way I like to learn the game is as fast as possible, and then we just play it. And I'd 
buckled down into that, right? To the point where when someone would sit down, I'd want them to go quick and snappy and then just start the game. And it didn't leave room for someone who had prepared, who had read the rules, who had their own way of teaching, who wanted to walk you through the steps, or in the case of Alex, had really, really thought about the way that you should approach a game the best. To give me, the person who just wants to sit down and play a game with them, the best possible experience. So we were talking. I was a little annoyed. I was a little frustrated that people weren't engaged, weren't following along with my teach. And then the conversation shifted to my behavior at the table. And Alex said, yeah, it's incredibly frustrating. I mean, I've spent time and hours and reread the rule book twice and learned the game on my own. It's insanely frustrating when people don't pay attention. And by the grace of God, I suppose, he powers through consistently in moments where he should have got up from the table and left or told the group unless they were paying attention, they weren't playing the game. He sits there and takes the jokes and the ribbing and the annoying and the distracted and pushes through and answers questions and reiterates points and teaches the rules and... Sure, might make a jab or two when you're playing the game and you forget something or lose because you didn't pay enough attention on the teach. But for some reason, him and other people who've taken the time to teach me and teach others games want to play the game so much that they push through the part that's hard, that's annoying and frustrating. And honestly, in my case, and I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think in my case specifically, that was so blind that they shouldn't have wanted to play games with me. And again, this is a weird and potentially embarrassing video to post. I mean, I'm telling 30,000 people that I was a complete uh, imbecile around my closest friends at the gaming table. But the reason that's important, the reason I wanted to have this conversation is, is because I didn't realize, I didn't see it until that conversation, until Alex just laid it out and I asked him directly if it was frustrating. And he said, yes, I've spent so much time planning and prepping and learning. And then people don't pay attention. And we don't. We could and should do so much better to respect the amount of time that it takes to learn and perfect a game. To, to honor, right, the work that's being done just to spend time with us and, and to sit down and facilitate. It's like preparing a good meal or a DM preparing a story. You don't set the potluck down in front and then immediately start complaining about the food to the person who's hosting you. And yet, that is what I was blindly doing around the teach of the game. It's been ruminating with me. And it's been a couple weeks now since we had the conversation. And every time now, someone sits down to teach me. Especially, and specifically, the people that I'm closest to. I do my best to consciously remember that they've put in so much time and so much effort just like I have when I'm sitting in their seat to learn and prep this game. And that I should give it my undivided attention. I should focus on the words and the ideas and the way that they're teaching and ask questions when I don't understand something so I can follow along and not make mistakes. Because ultimately their goal is not that I sit patiently and quietly while they lecture me or teach me. It's so that they can play a game with me. And if I give them a good environment to teach, the quicker we get to play a game and the faster we get to have fun and the better that game experience is going to be. But I didn't realize. I was just blind to it. And so I want to challenge and encourage those of you that enjoy this channel, that are watching this video. How can you give a little bit more space to the people who teach you games? Or if you're the teacher, how can you communicate to your game group, 
things that frustrate you so that we can have a better environment to learn so we can facilitate and encourage and engage with hanging out with each other. It's a tricky balancing act and one that I had doubled down on the wrong side of. It's not easy to recognize things about yourself and uh, be purposeful about changing them, but I care so much about the people that I'm playing games with. I can't take back how obnoxious I've been, but I can certainly do my best to change my steps in the future. So, that's my thoughts. That's where my mind has been over this last weekend. We played so many good games over the last weekend, and every time we sat down to engage with one, and I wasn't perfect, I never am, but every time we sat down, that line crossed my mind. I spent two hours, read the rule book twice, only to sit down in front of this group and have them be obnoxious and distracted. It's insanely frustrating. Well, no longer. And hopefully this encourages some of you who do the same thing I do, or who have been blind to their actions and interactions. Hopefully this shines a big spotlight on it and encourages you to say thank you, give credence, or be a little bit more engaged and respectful when someone gives you the opportunity to learn a game from them so that you can hang out and play. And if it doesn't, if I'm alone in this, let me know in the comment section down below because there's a chance that maybe I'm just the problem. Whatever the case, though, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.